So a few weeks ago, I rented my brand new Tesla Model 3 on Turo for a one day rental. And in this video, I'm gonna share how much I made, what happened and why I will never do it again. Now, if you don't know what Turo is, Turo's like Airbnb for your car, your sexy car. Nobody's gonna rent your shitty car. So I went on there and I'm seeing like Teslas are, you know, between 150 bucks to $300 a day. And I'm thinking, sweet, I'm gonna make so much money. So why Turo? Well, as an entrepreneur, I'm thinking, how do I turn a liability into an asset? I work from home. I don't use it every single day. I live pretty close to the city. If I need to get in, I can Uber or I can take a scooter. So I'm thinking, great, I can have this car pay for itself without me really being put out at all. Much like someone would rent out a spare room in their house or when they go away for a week, they would rent out their house on Airbnb because they're not using it. I'm thinking I can turn this liability into an asset. Here's how Turo works. One, sign up for Turo. There's a link in the description if you want to get $25 credit. Two, create your car listing. If you wanna know how to do this, I just looked at other cars that were similar to mine and basically copied what they did. Three, pick your insurance. I picked Turo Premium, which takes 35% of however much the car goes for, because I'm thinking worst case scenario, I wanna make sure that I'm totally covered. Four is set your availability and your pricing. So they have automatic pricing in there, which kind of is an algorithm that goes by your area and how much demand there is. Um, so, but you can set your own if you want. Here, you can see my listing. You'll see a grand whopping one five-star review for the one time and the last time that I will rent it out. So my first booking came in at around 3 a.m. and I got it first thing in the morning. So I'm looking and they want it like in an hour and a half. So in an hour and a half from that moment, they wanted the car. They wanted me to drive up north to deliver it. And I'm thinking, no. So I ended up canceling it because I'm thinking I want to have at least 12 hours before I have to do anything. A lot of times if you cancel a Turo booking, they will charge you $50. Since it was my first time, they let me off with it. So I went in, I changed the, the settings in there to make sure that you couldn't book the car within 12 hours. So now my real first booking came in and it was for two days later. So I'm thinking, great, I can do everything I need to do before two days without any trouble. So this was it. The Catmobile was going on her first trip without me and it was very exciting. So because it was her first trip, I wanted to get her ready, which means charging her, make sure it was washed and super clean because I wanted to get my first rating because like Airbnb, I knew that when people would search these platforms, the ratings are super important. Charging for me, I, I either go to the supercharger and I like to co-work out of there, which I can see is kind of weird sometimes, but I feel like, oh, I'm way more productive. Anyway, this specific time was in the middle of South by Southwest, so traffic was insane. I usually go to a hotel super close to here and I leave the car there for like half a day and have it charging, it's free. But because it was in the middle of South by Southwest, they had closed this whole area off because they were doing like concerts and stuff. So my usual spot was not available, which means I had to go to one of these paid chargers. I had to go 15 minutes out of my way pay like $8 or something to charge the car up to the 200 miles that I needed. So the whole thing took like 30 minutes. With that said, let me jump into all the costs that were involved with getting the car ready and exactly how much time it took. First, charging. In my listing, I said I was gonna charge it to 200 plus miles. That meant dropping the car off at a charger, picking it up, it took me about 30 minutes, and it cost me $8.30. Next was car washing. So I wanted to make sure that Catmobile was clean. What I did was I brought it to my local car wash, which I have an unlimited deal for. So what I did is I paid $4.50 for a year at an average of two, three times a month of washing it. This equals about $18.75 per wash. So that's the total to wash it. It also took me about 30 minutes of my time to go and drop it off. Pick up an instruction. So unlike a normal car, Teslas require instruction. Most people, when they rent it, have never driven a Tesla before. So not only are you renting this car, you're also teaching someone how it works. All in all, pick up and then teaching them how to drive it took about 40 minutes. Pre-trip photos. So when Turo has you check someone in, 
you have to get their driving license and you also have to take pictures of the car. So you have to take inside pictures, outside pictures so that they can see what standard the car was in when it was picked up so that if you have some sort of insurance claim they can be like well this was on the car before so this is like a five minute process just taking these pictures and then when the car gets dropped off that took about 10 minutes because i'm talking to the to the renter about how it went he was very excited he loved the car and then we're taking photos of the car afterwards to make sure that there's no damage so all in all the drop off took about 10 minutes. So here it is. Here is the total that I made from this experience. Total earnings, 151. Minus turtle fees and insurance, $52.85. Minus expenses, 27.05, which is the car wash and charging, gives me a grand total, bring it to the bank, $71.10. Wow. All of this stuff, for $71.10, was it worth it? Let's talk about the unseen costs associated with this. I just went through hard costs that came out of how much I made. What about peace of mind? What I realized is I spent more time just thinking like, I hope the car's okay. The great thing about a Tesla is you can open the Tesla app and see where your car is. You can see if it's driving, how fast it's driving, if it's parked, like what's the helicopter equivalent of a relationship to your car? Cause that's what I had. This is not more productive. Me renting my car out was like, oh, it's gonna turn this asset or liability into an asset. And instead I'm, my mind share is focused on where this car is and not on the stuff that I'm supposed to be focusing on. Next unseen cost is wear and tear. So wear and tear is natural depreciation with any asset. So the brakes, the tires, adding more miles to the odometer. This guy had only driven 81 miles per day, but an electric car depreciates at a value of 3.68 cents per mile. So if we're to look at Turo, which generally sets 200 miles per day, that's a depreciation value of $7.36 for that one day. So what are my final thoughts? I gave you everything, the car came back, same condition, the guy was super nice. So why would I not rent my car on Turo again? It seems great, right? Well, no. Once I did an audit of the resources that went into this booking, I realized that I'd lost money. What I'd done is I'd spent two hours, which, is like $71, it's like $35 an hour. I wouldn't rent my time out for $35 an hour. So why would I give up this, my most expensive possession and spend all this time for something that I wouldn't ever sell my time for? I can 100% guarantee that if I put that same amount of time into my work and my business, I would get a much higher ROI. Renting my car on Turo, it's not something that's gonna move the needle in my life. It's not going to change how I live every day. And in fact, when I looked at it, it turned out to be a net negative. There's opportunity costs in everything that we do. Some costs are not worth the payoff. What I realized is I just don't really want strangers driving my car. And all of the other stuff was just cherry on top. One last thing before I finish up is, while I don't intend to rent my car in Turo again, I would say that there is an opportunity for people who are willing to rent their car in Turo because Tesla have now changed their business model away from where you can go to a dealership, take a car for a test drive. They're closing a lot of their dealerships. And also their new model is if you've never test driven a Tesla with them, then you can return a car either a thousand miles or within seven days. If you wanna get a Tesla, instead of renting it or test driving it through Tesla, why don't you go on Turo, rent a Tesla, and then figure out if you wanna return it within seven days, cause you still have that option. This is my experience. If you've had a different one or have some comments, please leave your comment below. Otherwise you can see a blog post describing this entire situation on littlemite.com. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope if you're thinking of renting your car or even renting a car that this post was enjoyable. If you're interested in this, 
business tips, productivity tips, then sign up, subscribe to my YouTube channel below, and I will see you on the next video.